about that. Let's get back to the question. Morgan Riley again, on the ice, off the ice. How, how much of a positive is this for a team coming off a bizarre three-gamer in California? Well, weirdly enough, I almost think it's more important off the ice for the Leafs to get Morgan Riley back. I mean, to me, this group is in need of something, uh, some kind of spark uh, to get them going. And, and I just think Morgan's such an important part of the leadership of the group. He's obviously a very good player for them, and he's been gone for quite some time, 23 games with this broken foot. So it's been a long while playing on without him, and, and I do think that getting him back for a big game, getting back here on home ice, that this is a lot of positives for the Leafs because, you know, you're right, California was totally bizarre. They, they only allowed two goals in those last two games in L.A. and Anaheim, and they got one out of four possible points there, and they really missed out on opportunity to keep uh, a big lead on Florida Panthers in the playoff race. Uh, Sid told me why the power play was bad yesterday. Can it improve with Morgan Riley in the lineup? Uh, I think it can, although I do believe he'll start on the second power play unit, which doesn't get a much work for the Leafs. But we've seen them experimenting a little, having Mitch Marner uh, back up high in practice. And so I think you're going to see perhaps a little bit more movement from the team. Uh, on the on the power play, which which should help. I think they feel it's growing a bit stagnant with the way uh, they do things, that it's a bit predictable. And obviously, teams uh, spend a lot of time scouting the specialty teams and and have a good feeling of what the Leafs are trying to do. So I think that they're going to you know change up how they're they're going about business on that unit because you know that could have been the difference between maybe getting a couple more points out in California in those tight games. Chris Johnson from Sportsnet Live from Scotiabank Arena ahead of Tampa Bay and the Leafs tonight. Uh, Chris, at the media veils this morning, and obviously they were outside of the dressing room in, in the new world we live in here. It was it was news. It was press conference form. How many guys watched that Panthers Blues game on Sportsnet last night? Are they there, or are they just kind of focusing in on what they need to do? I don't know if they're watching those games, but I think they're certainly aware of where they stand right now. And. You know, it, a couple of them did mention feeling as though it was a bit of a missed opportunity in California. You know, they had a five-point lead on Florida when they started that trip. They were in each of those games, uh, you know, tied after two periods in San Jose, uh, getting to overtime in a shootout against L.A. and, and getting within one in Anaheim. And they, they felt that they could have really kind of put the pedal down and instead they've gone in reverse here. And so I think they're, they're very acutely aware of how close this race is. There's still one more game coming up head-to-head -head with the Panthers. And the reality is this is probably going to go right down uh, to the end of the season before it's decided. Uh, the bad news is that the Leafs are facing the top-scoring team in the league. The good news is that they've played well defensively of late, or is it just more bad news because they also haven't scored while playing well defensively? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of bad news lately. It's been up and down. I think the one good thing in this game is that they, they played well in Tampa two weeks ago. Uh, that was one of their better recent victories that they've put together. Complete effort. Uh, you know, a lot of different guys going. wasn't just one line that was clicking offensively. And I think that they have a certain confidence that they can have success against the Lightning. I mean, obviously, Tampa uh, is a very good team. But, you know, I think that they're built in similar fashion. Uh, the Leafs probably aren't as intimidated by Tampa's offense as a lot of other teams might be just because they feel as though they can go head-to-head -head with that and, and, and play a 5-4 game if that's what the, the circumstances dictate in, in this one. So I think it's, it's, it's a good game for the Leafs because no one has to tell them how big it is. No one has to explain how dangerous the opponent is, and it is an opponent they have some, had some recent success against. CJ, one of, one of the stranger quotes maybe not strange but one of the more unexpected quotes from that road trip for the Leafs to me was Mitch Marner after the Anaheim loss Friday night talking about staying off social media just kind of not going there not needing to read that stuff how much of an effect especially for a younger team like this how much of an effect do you think social media is having on this group well, I don't think we can overestimate it because to me, social media is where all the bad stuff happens. Even just in my small corner of the universe, uh, if there's going to be hate, it tends to be on Twitter or people calling you names and what have you. Now, I'm a little older and, and I'm not nearly as much in the public eye as these guys are. So I, I do think it's tough. And, and you know, I think for Mitch Marner especially, this has been a tough year. You know, that, that contract, uh, long negotiation he had with the Leafs through the summer and into the start of training camp. You know, I think that took a toll on him. Obviously, he took some criticism there. You know, now that he's making the salary that he's making, I think uh, he's a little bit more in the spotlight in terms of taking some some heat from fans, especially. You know, I haven't seen the traditional media really take a run at him, uh, but you know, I also haven't scrolled through his Instagram feed and seen what everyone's saying there. So, you know, I think that it was pretty telling quote actually for Mitch Marner. He wasn't prompted 
about that. It was just a question about the game, and he was mentioning kind of the need to just circle the wagons and 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 get uh, you know inside the team environment, not worry about everything being said out outside those doors. And you know, I do think it's a significant thing for these guys to deal with, especially when times are tough. Chris Johnson joining us from Scotiabank Arena here on Tim and Sid. Both both Sid and I have been very cautious about attempting to give uh, coronavirus updates, just kind of passing along the facts. So I don't want to put you in a tough spot, but we're, we're walking down roads in many states in the U.S. right now. What's the latest that you're hearing about a contingency plan or if we might end up, you know, playing behind closed doors or maybe even missing games? Well, all those contingencies have been discussed by the NHL. And, you know, I think that they've looked at potentially having neutral site games. If, for example, a team like the San Jose Sharks, where there's an issue in Santa Clara County where they play, maybe you have to play some games somewhere else other than, than San Jose. Uh, they've looked at the possibility of postponing the schedule a little bit and pushing games back later into April. And they've gotten available building dates from each team to do that. And they've also talked about potentially playing in empty arenas. And, and you know, when I look at what's happening more broadly, guys, I just don't know how how much longer we could continue having events like this with, you know, 20,000 people being Scotiabank Arena here behind me tonight for this game just because of you know, what the governments have said in a lot of places. Uh, you know, you had the, the governor of Ohio today say he doesn't want to see sporting events more than 5,000 people. There's a health official in Philadelphia today who, who gave that same fact for, for Philadelphia. And so, you know, I think that there's going to be a certain pressure on the league at some point, especially if, if the number of coronavirus cases continue increasing at the rate they have, uh, where, you know, it's going to be tough for the league to keep playing games. Obviously, it's a priority for them to try to, to do it with fans. Uh, but I, certainly they've... They've mentally gone down the road of what does this look like? How do we do this? And I do think they're prepared to go to, to those those levels, including having games in empty arenas, if that's what the circumstances dictate. And CJ, again, the only the only county in the NHL or the only state or province that has gone down this road was was Santa Clara County last night, prohibiting gatherings of a thousand people yep. or more. Everything else, like you said, like Tim said, was a recommendation. My question to you is how many more cities or counties do you think need to jump on this? before it turns into something Gary Bettman cannot not act on? Like, at one point, does the schedule get so disrupted? How many more locations have to get involved become, before it becomes a real, real scheduling nightmare? I, I wish I had the answer for that. You know, I, I really don't. I mean, this is such uncharted waters that, you know, I, I don't really know what this looks like. And, and, you know, we've seen other leagues canceling their playoffs, you know, in, in Germany and Austria today. Switzerland has delayed the start of its playoffs. Norway, you got the Indian Wells Tennis Tournament, the Women's World Hockey Championship. You know, the NHL doesn't exist outside of the bubble. This, you know, this is part of it. And I would guess, much like we saw yesterday when they formally announced that reporters would be kept out of the dressing room in conjunction with the other sports leagues, including the NBA, I would think that whatever happens will be done uh, with the NBA and the NHL making the same decisions at the same times. And so, you know, as long as it's, they're, they're getting recommendations from health officials that it's safe, to play in, in these places, I think they're going to want to obviously get the games in and try to keep the things going. But, you know, if it gets to that level where they're empty arenas, you know, I would expect something in, in conjunction with the NBA. I think that the leagues will, will try to walk down this path together. Solid insight as always. Chris Johnson of Sportsnet live from Scotiabank Arena, site of the Tampa Bay Lightning and Leafs tonight. CJ, we love you. Thanks, man. Love you too. Sorry about that hiccup off the start. No uh, problem. Power not your it. fault. What are you, Jack Campbell? Don't take don't take responsibility for everything. So it wasn't your fault. <laughs> I'm the Jack Campbell of this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, are. brother.